Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to just welcome you all to this Bible study. And I, first of all, I just want to begin by thanking my father, Pastor Osasago, for this opportunity today. Um, I'll be leading the Bible study and just thanking God for giving me the grace to be able to um, help and study the Bible with all of you today. Amen. So I'd like to start with, of course, a Bible reading. Let's turn to the book of John. Chapter 8, verse 36. <laughs> We're not going to pay too much attention to this verse right now. I just want you to keep it in mind while I do my introduction. For book of John, chapter 8, verse 36. And it reads, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, therefore, if the Son which is, of course, Jesus Christ, and this was said by Jesus. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. Amen. We won't be talking about this now. I just want you to keep it in mind as I go through the Bible study. In the same book of John, let's, do, let's go to the 14th chapter. John chapter 14, verse 6. Says. Jesus said to him, many of us know the contents of this verse. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Three things, the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus said, no one comes to the Father, that is God the Father in heaven, except through me. Amen. Amen. Let's focus on this verse. What's it saying here? If you were to look at what the verse is primarily saying, one key message. But Christ, Jesus Christ, is the only path. Mm. And since Jesus' path is, it's not just the way. It's the way to truth. Truth. What is truth? A lack of confusion. A lack of deceit. And the life. Amen. 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 And of course, I imagine we all want to be on the path of truth and life. But but why is this? Why would we want to be on that path? Now, let's go back to the original verse I said. I said, keep it in mind, John 8, verse 36. And it says, therefore, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Many things in this world, many things in this life, may claim to set you free may claim to help you, may claim to protect you. But the only true one, it said, the only truth, the only one that makes you free indeed, that guarantees it, is the Son, who is, of course, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But it's all, it's all good talking about this freedom, talking about what Jesus is setting us free. Like, Jesus is setting us free. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The way to what? What life is he giving us? What is he giving us freedom from? So I'd like to expand on that first. Well, in my own opinion, I'd like to say he's setting us free from anything that doesn't give God glory. Amen. But of course, we all know, we all know, this is Bible study. I can't just say from my own opinion. I have to back it up with the word of God. So of course, we're going to back it up with the Bible. Let's go to the book of Romans first. verses from Romans. First, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation, no judgment, no punishment. To what? To those who are in Christ Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Okay, this freedom that God has given us, it's freed us from what? Condemnation, from punishment. What does condemnation lead to? Harm, judgment. Those who are in Christ Jesus. And what else does it say? Who do not, do not walk according to the flesh, mm -hmm. but according to the spirit. Um, just to get it across to you, when the Bible says the flesh, it's talking about the ways of the world, yes, <clears throat> the ways of the devil. Mm -hmm. God, of course, is a, is a spirit. He's beyond this world. The flesh, that's what we're bound by, the flesh. It's saying who does not walk according to the flesh. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Let's go to Romans. Still same book of Romans, like I said, but this time chapter 10. And let's go verse 11. Okay. And it says, for the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Amen. This is what I meant when I said anything that does not give glory to God. Okay, many Christians, that, of course we read the Bible, we go to church on Sunday, but there are so many things in the word of God that we can often overlook. For every situation and circumstance, there's a verse. Whoever believes on him shall not be put to shame. Maybe there's someone in your life there's a phrase we use, like someone preying on your downfall. It's just someone plotting for something bad to happen to you. Maybe they're jealous. Maybe they have envy. All these are fruits of a devil that we shouldn't be having. Whoever believes on him shall not be put to shame. It's saying as long as you're following the way, the truth, and the life, you're free from this. Amen. And there's one more thing I'm going to talk about freedom from. And um, we'll go to the book of Galatians. Can somebody go to the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1? If you're there, you can read. Amen, verse 1. Hallelujah. It is for the freedom that Christ has set us free. Hmm. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Amen. Amen. In my ver version, it uses, I'm sorry, but it uses the word yoke of bondage. Yes. This freedom that Christ has given us is freedom from the yoke of bondage. What does this mean? What's a yoke? What's bondage? It's kind of synonymous with slavery, with a burden. Any burdens you have in your life, anything that's putting pressure on you, as long as you're following what did I say? The way, the truth, and the life. You're free from it. Amen. So that brings me to the main focus, the main almost topic of today's Bible study. And I'd like it to be securing Christ's blessings. Securing Christ's blessings. So now on that note, let's go to the book of Ephesians. Right at the very start of Ephesians. Chapter 1, verse 3, where it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with what? With every spiritual ble blessing in heavenly places in Christ. I don't think you're understanding this, because if you understood this, you, you wouldn't be this quiet. Every spiritual blessing. Hallelujah. He, he's not just limiting it. Christ isn't limited. He's the way, the truth, and the life. It says every spiritual blessing, every single thing that could benefit you in your life, every single thing, but in this world, not just in this world, but can send you to the world with God. Every spiritual blessing. But of course, we all, obviously this sounds great. Every spiritual blessing sounds great. We want everything, but how do we secure this? That's why I said securing Christ's blessings. Because now we know that it's in the Bible. Now we know that it's in the Bible, but we have access to these. Mm. How do we secure these? And secure if I were to put it sim simply, mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm. completely commit yourself to God. Mm. That is, that is, you should show your allegiance to God by being loyal to him. But I just want to add a four note quickly, because before you can do any of the things I'm about to talk about, before you can connect to God, there are some things um, you have to cut off. You have to cut off the things of this world. Because the Bible says, any if your right arm causes you to sin, you should cut it off. 
I'm going to talk about cutting off the things of this world first. Because the Bible does say we're, of, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So let's go to the book of James. James chapter 4, verse 4. And it says, Adulterers, you adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is an enmity with God? In that case, what it's saying is, if you're loyal to the world, it's in the... We use this term in maths, inversely proportional. It's also used in science. Mm -hmm. If one's going up, the other's going down. As long as you're in this world, you're, the f closer you get to this world, is what I'm saying, the further away you are from God. And what it says is, whoever therefore wants to be friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Okay, so it actually goes further than I thought. If you're closer to the world, you're not just further from God. You're directly opposing God. You're not leaving God's side. You're turning against God's side. Okay? In fact, there are many ideas in this world. Many, many ideals being, what's the word, propagated, being sent through our society today. And as Christians, I'm going to be honest, we can't be a part of them. Obviously, I don't mean um, that um, you have to be disrespectful to people who aren't Christians for um, the Bible says, be angry, but don't sin in your anger. Um, in fact, I'll make an analogy. Say you had a friend, and this friend was smoking, right? Obviously, we know that smoking isn't good for your health. And you might tell this friend, um, you might show this friend about how smoking is bad for them. That's, that's the equivalent of preaching the gospel and showing someone on the right path. But what you wouldn't do is just smack the cigarette out of their mouth and just like scream at your friend and start fighting them. That's what I mean in how we can oppose these things in our world today. Okay. The Bible says, the Bible says we shouldn't be equally yoked with unbelievers. It's hard to see in this world where it's society's trying to become more secular, where as Christians, we can't be a part of this. So, in fact, let's let's prove this in the Bible. It's Bible study after all. That's why I'm throwing in so many verses in every opportunity. Look at First John, chapter two, verse fifteen. In fact, we'll go all the way to seventeen. This is a long one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, watch this. This is about opposing being an enemy of God. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not of him. That is to say, if you're loving the things of this world, that's directly saying, that's directly saying that you're not with God. Okay, next verse. For all that is in the world, everything in the world is listing things here. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And in the last verse, I'll read 17, it says, And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does what? The will of God abides forever. Amen. That is to say, why is it using the word lust so often? That's an attraction to something. It's not just an attraction. Because if it's an attraction to something intrinsic, inside, deep, proper, that would be love. But it's using lust. That's a more perverse, it's more disgraceful type of attraction. Maybe to something you shouldn't be, or for the wrong reasons. So it's using the word lust. Anyone who has lust towards the things of the world is not doing the will of God. But if you don't, you are doing the will of God. And what does it say? You abide forever. Amen. You're eternally with God. So now, now I've talked about cutting off the things of the world. We can return to the original point, which was showing allegiance and being loyal to God. So first of all, 
The Bible says that we should be imitators of Christ. That is to say we should reflect God's actions. We should do as he does, right? Mm. So one of the most important ways to give God glory would then be to follow his ways, follow the will of God. But to follow his ways, we first have to know what God's ways are. <coughs> and how would we know what his ways are? Well, to that, I'd say I'd say we know his ways from the word. And there's a very popular verse about following God's word, learning God's ways from his word. And it's Joshua 1 verse 8. But I'd like to look at that for a while. Remember, today we're talking about securing Christ's blessings. One verse eight. It says, this book of the law. In fact, I'm sorry, but I want to focus on this. This book of the law. Sure, it is literally a book of the law. It does list God's commandments. But what else? It's saying that everything written in the Bible, every single thing, you should follow it. There's not a single part of the Bible. There's not a single part that you shouldn't reference <coughs> to live God's best in life according to you. And it says, what shall not depart from your mouth? In fact, I've never noticed this in this verse, but it uses the word mouth. That's not it. I always thought it was talking about your mind, but it's saying your mouth. That is to say... I know many Christians, obviously, but we don't all have to become pastors. But the Bible still says, shall not depart from your mouth. That is to say, you should continue to speak it out. You should continue to spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. Even before Jesus was in the Bible, his influence was there. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Tell it to yourself. Tell it to others. It doesn't matter if they're believers or not. You still have to spread the word. Hallelujah. And it says, but you should meditate in it day and night. You should focus on it. I used to be guilty of this. I used to just read the Bible and just be reading it like it was just a casual book. But you have to be fully understanding of every single thing that is in the book. You have to be fully understanding of every word that is written. Amen. Amen. And why does it say? It says that you may observe to do all that is according according to all that is written in it. What does this mean? This is sort of, um, this is kind of like a moral thing. If you don't know that something is wrong and you do it and then you get punished for it, would that be fair? No, no because you didn't know it was wrong in the first place. But God is aware of this, right? And he's preparing us for this. He's saying that we should be able to read all of this and meditate on it, understand it, so that we know if what we are doing is according to the will of God. Mm. Maybe some Christians out there, maybe some people are committing sins and they're not even aware of it because they haven't truly meditated on the word. For then, now it's going into the benefits then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Amen. These are more of Christ's blessings for you. So what else What else can be done? What else can we do? Let's continue. We'll go back to the New Testament. We'll go to Matthew. Matthew. Go to Matthew chapter 22. We'll go to Matthew 22 verse 37. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. Remember, these are the things you can do to secure Christ's blessings. Right? And if, if you look at the context, quickly, before I 
focus on this verse. If you look at the context of this verse, someone asked Jesus, what is the greatest, as in most significant, most important, the focal point, the greatest commandment in the law, that is to say God's word, right? And this is what he responded with as the greatest commandment, the most intrinsic thing to do, to love God. As a Christian, that's the focus. That's the focus. Even in today's society, people, you'll see so many different denominations, so many different forms. But this is the one thing, by definition, that unites them all as Christian. Believing in God and just the love for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The entire focus of your life, your entire focus, your entire mind, your entire mindset, your mentality, it should be on God. That's not to say that obviously, that's obviously not to say you should disregard other people, right? The Bible says next that you should, you should love your neighbor as yourself, right? But don't, don't put men, as in, when I say men, I mean humans, don't put men in the place of God, okay? The book of Colossians. We're jumping around the whole Bible today. Not a single book will be missed. The book of Colossians, chapter 3. Right on. Colossians, yeah. Chapter 3, from 23. If you're there, you can read. Colossians 3, verse 23. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with your with all your heart, as though you are working for the Lord and not for the people. Mm-hmm. Whatever you do, work with all your heart, as if you're working for who? The Lord. The Lord, and not for? Human masters. Hmm. What did I say? Focus on God. Give God priority in your life. Amen. Amen. And now carry on to the next verse, verse 24. 24. Remember that the Lord will give you as a that remember that the Lord will give you as a reward what he has kept for his people. For Christ is the real master you serve. God will give you as a reward what he has kept for your people. Amen. This is reinforcing that Christ is the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. This is kept to you. Okay, you're, if you follow God's word, if you're on God's path, if you're following Christ the Lord, if your salvation, in fact, the only place to find your salvation is in him, then you'll have the rewards that are solely kept to you in Jesus' name. Amen. In fact, this is actually important because, like I said, the salvation is found only in Jesus. And in the world today, God wants us to beware false prophets, okay, false doctrines, false teachings, okay. There are many people, there are many people, and I'll say it, there are many people in the world today, you'll see them online, you might have gone there in person, spreading false gospels, and they're saying they're doing it in the name of Jesus, when obviously their message directly, directly opposes the word of God, So, you know what, I'll keep it short, because the word is enough for the wise. We'll, do, we'll go to one more Bible verse. I'm turning into it now in my Bible, but to be honest, I don't need to, and I don't think any of us need to. The book of John chapter 3, 16. It says, it says, for God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. There are, I've, you know, I've, I've said so many verses today, and I don't want to make it seem like God is, God's not here to, in fact, all the verses I chose today, I'm pretty sure they were all positively focused. Because if you look at the, the Ten Commandments, it says, do not, do not, do not. But God's not putting a negative focus on your life. It's the devil that came to kill, steal, and destroy. God loves us. He loves the world. Can any of us give up our child 
of the world the way Jesus did. And it says, you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This has come up in so, so much that I've said, everlasting, eternal, forever, because God's love does not end. See, humans, humans are unreliable. You can't put your faith and trust in horses, the Bible says in Psalms. But God's love is everlasting. It's forever. Hmm. I said I wouldn't say any more verses. I went and said another one. It's fine. So let's let's pray because we have to communicate with God. Amen. Father God, I thank you for your grace in our life. I thank you for giving us the grace, giving us the knowledge regarding your blessings, Lord. And yet, Lord, we understand that we can't just get them for nothing. <coughs> Lord, please guide us on your path so that we can love you, so that we can understand your word, and we can follow your commandments and spread your gospel. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. So just a reminder, this has been our Bible study on Friday. You can join us at the same time as today for our prevailing prayer. Every Sunday is our Sunday celebration service. And I think we can say with grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely... Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I love you all with the love of God, and God loves you more.